Good evening guys from Beverly, Massachusetts. We are here with our friends David and uh, Susan. Uh, we've actually been laid up here in a sense of waiting for parts and having the uh, cooling system on the truck disabled for about five days now. And uh, David and Susan's hospitality has been so kind and you know the right people in your life are there when you need them. Thank you so much guys. But here's what's going on with the truck. So this is our SPAR D5 hydronic heater. Well, this is what it looks like all taken apart. But what's going on here, let's see. So what's going on here is this little piece is called the atomizer. And what it does is it atomizes the diesel fuel over the glow pin. So it uh, pretty much ignites nice and clean. That is uh, full of carbon. Lo and behold, when I took it apart, there was a gasket that also needed to be replaced. I ordered this online. I really probably should talk to a human because a human would have said, hey, Ben, make sure you order this too. All right, well, it's 7, 10 p.m. right now. Still no UPS delivery. Frustrating as can be because I am literally all set for the past two plus hours to put this thing back together. There's always tomorrow, but damn, you know? It was loaded on the truck at 8.21 a.m. when the truck like left to go do its deliveries. Nah, such is life, guys. Well, it's a brisk morning here in Massachusetts. I was uh, editing, enjoying my coffee, and I got a text. The package has arrived. These two gaskets are what I've been waiting for, but since I placed another order, this is an atomizer to uh, do it next time and a couple fuel filters, so I will have an extra after I change it and then another gasket set. Let's do this. This little sucker is like so. It's a mighty little component. I'll always call it that. You know, diesel fired in here, the uh, heat exchange to the coolant, uh, which circulates through the system here. Very basic principles. Now it's to the point of installing it back in the truck. So the location where the heater sits is right up in there. It's getting to that point where uh, I'm gonna hook it up and find out did I fix it or not. So it's all a learning process, but next time I don't think I have to remove this whole case. So while I'm down here, I am going to replace the fuel filter and the fuel filter is nothing more than a little screen that gets inserted right into the bottom end of the fuel pump. Easy maintenance. Okay, it's set to 73 degrees, heat on. Oh, we have ignition. Exhaust is coming out. So another thing I'm gonna be up against is having to bleed the air out of the system. There's a bleed screw on top of this unit, and then there's a uh, bleed point inside the camper. Well, it's quit on me a couple times. I think we're, I'm crossing my fingers. We might be in business. Oh, oh. Um, yeah, maybe it was just working the air out of the diesel line. But it's definitely burning now. Well, I got to knock on wood here, guys. I've spent about the past 45 minutes bleeding air out of the system. And I remember uh, Dave, the seller, uh, said that it's very, very finicky that uh, all the air is bled out of this system. So I was just back and forth, back and forth between the two bleed points. You know, I showed you the one on the uh, S-Bar itself, but these are all connected here and that's another bleed point. Oh, but I think we purged an air bubble because all of a sudden we just got circulation. There's still plenty of smoke coming out, but I think that's just because I had to start and stop, start and stop a lot. 
So I'm hoping, yeah, and this is the longest of the uh, unit has stayed running. So I'm really, really hoping that it was just like circulation and it would fault out. But like I said, I don't know anything about these. And I just watched a YouTube video. And aside from being mechanically inclined, I just jumped right in. The uh, protective cover is now back on the uh, S-Bar. It feels good to uh, fix things, guys. It feels really good. So if you're curious what we've been doing to uh, get heat for the past five, six days, well, Beck's mom picked these things up at like a Home Depot. But they are little itty bitty space heaters that plug into a wall outlet and I think they only draw about 450 watts and thankfully our hosts uh, David and Sue let us plug into their 15 amp David Sue Roman we can't thank you guys enough it just really means a lot that you were here to help us and uh, host us during this little mechanical breakdown all right guys that is a wrap for this video I know it was a little bit different from what we normally produce, but it's just a little uh, segment of real life that we wanted to share with you. So if it's your first time, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one.